Have you ever been through a difficult experience which changed your life or completely turned your world upside down? Today, I'd like to share with you a dark time that I went through when I was 15, what happened, how I got through it, and how I was able to find meaning through all the chaos, even in the darkest of times. And my hope is that this story and these lessons will help you to see challenges that you face in life in a different way. This story starts in 2005, and I was 15 years old at the time, and I lived in southern Mississippi where I was born and raised. I was in 10th grade going to high school. I had just started 10th grade, and there was news of a big storm coming. It's called Hurricane Katrina. Now, hurricanes weren't really new for me or for my friends, my family. We were used to them. Many years before that, when I was in like third grade, when I was like 10, we've gone through many different hurricanes. Most of the time we stayed home, my dad boarded up the house and we just waited out the storm. There was some wind and rain, nothing really big happened. Maybe a few trees fell in the neighborhood or something or around town, but nothing that bad. We lost power for a few days, maybe a week. Luckily, my dad bought a generator so we could run fans, lights, television a little bit, watch the news, and I could play Super Nintendo sometimes. So it was never that bad, it was just a little hot. So when me and my friends heard about Hurricane Katrina coming up the Gulf into Mississippi, we were kind of asking each other, oh, are you gonna stay for the hurricane? Oh, we're not sure yet, you know, same old stuff. We thought it's gonna come this weekend and then next week we're gonna go maybe be out of school for a few days and then they'll open up school again get the electricity back on, everything will be back to normal. Yeah, that didn't happen. So I think a day or two before the storm, my dad decided we're not gonna stay. We're gonna evacuate, go north a little bit, about 20 or 30 minutes. Luckily we did because this is where my life changed forever. As Hurricane Katrina was hitting, we were able to watch some of the news and see some of the images that they were broadcasting and it was wild it was insane and we kind of had a feeling that our house was going to be terribly flooded or maybe not even be there anymore we didn't know what to expect so after about a week after the storm once the roads were clear there was no curfew it was probably a few days to almost a week we were able to go back to the house my childhood home where i always had lived and we turned around the corner i remember this moment we were walking down the street just like devastation everywhere but there's people, the houses are still there. They're just kind of flooded. Things are everywhere. We turn the corner, try to look where my house used to be, and there was no house anymore. It's just gone. It looked like a tornado hit the place. Have you ever seen on the news what it looks like after a tornado hits where there's just stuff scattered everywhere? No structure? That's how it was. The only thing standing, the last thing standing of my house was a single toilet. That was the only thing standing, which is insane. Crazy. It was very emotional time, very difficult time to go through that. Until you go through something like that, seeing your house and not even be able to find any of your belongings in your house, everything you've ever known in your house is completely gone. You can't understand it until you've been in that situation, really. It's, it's really a crazy feeling. Terrible, terrible feeling. And from that moment on, my life completely changed. I had to move to a new town, a new school, a new state, cross the country. My life completely changed forever. Had to make all new friends and all the stuff, which uh, didn't really happen. And that's when kind of my darkest time ensued, so to speak. The good thing is I learned a lot from this. There's a lot of positive that happened, even though it was very difficult to process a few years later. After many years went by, I was able to look back at what had happened and understand, look at it more objectively or look at it through a different lens, a different perspective. So these are the lessons that I learned from this terrible experience. You can have positive outcome from terrible situations. Ironically, it's funny that that was one of my first realizations is that even though something terrible happened in my life, looking back at the past, I'm glad it happened. Actually looking back at it because I like where I'm at now in my life. And I feel looking back at my life, if that thing didn't happen to me, I don't know where I would be right now. I can't imagine finishing out my life in Southern Mississippi. I don't know what I would have done. So I'm glad 
I'm grateful for the path that that storm set my life on. You can build, you can grow back again, and you can accept the reality and try to change that reality that you're in and move forward. It doesn't have to define you forever or keep you in that same spot forever. And this kind of brings me to the next point is that I learned to not be a victim as much. You know, after the first few years of going through that storm, it was very difficult because everyone, when I went to school, everyone kind of knew I was the new kid and had heard, some people had heard what had happened to me. I lost all my stuff. So I was like, everyone saw me as this kid that lost all this stuff. They didn't understand it. They didn't empathize with me. They couldn't understand it really for a few years. It took me a while to process everything and to grow out of that depressive state. And I think even just being a teenager, it's already difficult being a teenager, especially moving to a new school, having no friends anymore. So having that on top of everything that I lost my whole entire life and I had to rebuild everything and it, it just added so much pressure to everything. There came a time where I eventually just moved on from it and I realized that I had to grow from this. I had stuff to learn from this and I started reflecting on it. My life changed and I began, I began accepting my new life rather than wishing my old life would come back. You know, for a while I felt like I lost the feeling of home, the sense of having a home, because that house to me always felt like home. Like that's where my home base was. And when I didn't have that anymore, I just felt like I don't know where home is. And then I finally adapted and, and realized it's not about the actual location or having that house. It's about just living your life and accepting your reality, accepting where you are now and learning to grow and adapt. I can remember my dad would call me every week or every month or so, we'd talk on the phone for a bit. And I remember him telling me, you know, life's too short, man. You got to just do what you love to do, do what you enjoy, because life's too short. You never know when everything could change or you might die or something like, imagine if we stayed uh, during that storm, which some of my neighbors did, and the water level went over my roof, which is insane. Uh, people were swimming I mean, it's a crazy story. If you guys want to hear the entire Hurricane Katrina story of what happened, I'll, I'll tell it in a different video or something, but it'll be like a longer video, almost like a podcast or something. But it's an, it's an incredible, crazy story that I went through journey of everything. That piece of advice that my dad told me, I, it's always stuck with me. And uh, I think that's really why I put a lot of effort into these, into my art, into my videos, even though I have a day job, I kind of put everything into my my side job here because this is what I want to do. You know, I want to be free in this life. I want to be creative. I want to do what I want to do. And life's too short for me. So thank you, dad, for that advice. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. Something else that's a little coincidental is that I became interested in minimalism many years later, uh, just a few years ago, actually, I became interested in minimalism and getting rid of all my possessions, like things that you don't really, that aren't necessary, stuff you haven't used in so many years, or like only keeping stuff that really sparks joy, so to speak. This is kind of ironic because back in the storm, I had lost everything I'd ever owned from when I was born until the age of 15. The only thing I kept that I brought with me when we evacuated was this whole little binder of like one or 200 CDs, like music CDs that I had, because I really loved music at that time, and like a sketchbook or something. That's the only thing I brought. Everything else, and I had like one or two pairs of clothes. That was it. Everything else I completely lost, not recovered. And something I realized after the storm, after that happened, I realized that I didn't even miss most of the stuff that I lost. And actually, probably 80%, 70 to 80% of everything that I lost, I don't even remember what I had. I don't even remember what it was. I only remember a few small things that were important to me. So it was it was funny having that realization even when I was a teenager, like, wow, I didn't even, I don't even miss any of that stuff. And it was it was kind of freeing in a way, it was nice, but I, I had never heard about minimalism or anything back then. I didn't know anything about it, but it was kind of forced upon me. So it's not something I really enjoyed at that time. Following this path in my life has led me to minimalism. And I think that storm has kind of impacted me in that way is like, I don't want to keep a lot of stuff. 
because if that happens again, I don't want to lose like a bunch of stuff. And it's, it's not important to me to have a lot of stuff. I realize that it's not the things that are important. It's what I do with my life and what do I, what I enjoy doing and having family around and connections in my life, having friends, uh, things like that. It's not really all the things didn't even really matter. I don't even remember. I just do my best to be grateful for each day that I have on this planet. Every single day, every morning when I wake up, I try to be grateful for all the things that I have, the life that I have, and yeah, I'm very grateful for that. And kind of the last thing that really impacted me is that life can change. Life is so unpredictable. Life can change in a blink of an eye, in an instant. And, it's, and it can change in a dramatic and drastic way because as I said at the beginning, my friends and I, my family, nobody expected that to happen. We had been through many hurricanes before. We were not expecting that to happen. We thought maybe we'll get some flooding in the house or something and we'll have to kind of buy new stuff and redo the house a bit, which happened to a lot of other people. But in our situation, our house was completely gone. You never know when life is going to throw those challenges and those big, huge changes at you. It can happen. It could happen tomorrow or it could happen never. You never know. So many things can happen. Life is very unpredictable. That's something I learned. And something I try to realize every day is that anything can happen. And I'm just going to do my best to kind of ride the wave of life and do my best to navigate it. That's all we can do is just do our best with each day. So those are some of the lessons that I learned. I'm sure there's more that I learned, but that's really all I can think of right now. But I think all of these lessons, the interesting thing about this, all these lessons that I learned, these can be applied to pretty much anything in life. They're very universal lessons that you can take. And you could probably learn these from other situations, but you can take these lessons and apply it to your own life. You don't have to go through something like I did. You don't have to go through any kind of tragedy, but tragedy is something that's part of the human condition. It's something that we face, whether it's the death of a loved one or loss of a job or loss of a house and things that we own, whatever it is, whatever kind of tragedy that we face, we can find meaning in the chaos. We can be transformed by this tragedy, accept it our, as best we can, process it, cope with it, but move forward with our life, build from that foundation and try to find the lessons with each tragedy that we face. Try to find the beautiful lessons, the positive lessons to, to look back on. And it might take some time. It might take a lot of reflection and journaling to see these and how, how that tragedy has really transformed or impacted your life and what kind of impacts did it have? Not just the initial impacts, which can be seen as bad or negative, but what kind of good things, what kind of path has it put you on to a better life? So I hope you enjoyed this kind of mini story the short story with some of the lessons there. If you'd like to hear the longer story, please let me know down below. I'll sit here and talk for like 30 minutes to an hour and just make a longer video about the whole entire journey that I went through. Um, it's pretty crazy. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Take care of yourself. Peace, my friends.